Now everybody knows if you want to fish for trout in Kentucky, rainbow or brown, Cumberland Tailwaters is a place to go. Oh my baby, old horsey. I've never seen that big a fish, Randall. Fishermen from around the country trek to the river to fish these trophy waters. Good oh, he's in. <laughs> he's in. <laughs> Quality trout are a common catch. Just recently, a 21 pound brown trout was caught, thanks to the limits the Department of Fish and Wildlife has in place. Just below Lake Cumberland, where water pushes through electric turbines, the Wolf Creek National Fish Hatchery raises these trout for release in the tailwaters. Today, the fisheries division will be clipping, fin clipping, brown trout before they're released. The reason we're clipping them is uh, we're doing a strain evaluation. Which means we'll see how the growth and health of one group's DNA compares with the other. We have two strains of brown trout and we're uh, trying to mark those and once they're stocked out into the river, then we're going to do some krill surveys and some shocking surveys and what we're trying to determine is does one strain perform better than the other once they're stocked? You know, do they, is one more easily catchable? Does one grow better than the other? Uh, you know, do they move more than others? There's just a lot of things you can determine by, by doing that. Well, since the average person can't just look at them and tell, we know what they are now, so we're gonna make a mark on these fish. It's actually gonna be clipping a fin close to the tail of the fish. There'll be some water in the bottom of the tubs. We're gonna have all the clippers line up with the, uh, against those tubs with a pair of scissors in their hand, and the net just keeps you from having to dip your hand all the way down in the water. We're gonna have a couple people in the raceway. Uh, the fish have been crowded up this way, and we're gonna have a couple people in the raceway. They're gonna be dipping out the trout and putting them into these tanks with water and the fish anesthetic. We're gonna be using a fish anesthetic to knock out the fish, and um, so they'll be a lot easier to handle than they, than they normally are. They're gonna be hopefully just sitting there uh, motionless in your hand as you clip them. And they're just gonna clip the adipose fin and then toss it back in. Of course, a fish has several fins and there's some of them that they, that they need to actually survive and then there's some that, that they can be clipped and it doesn't really affect their survival. Now both rainbow and brown trout have adipose fins. The adipose fin is on the back towards the tail. We're gonna clip the adipose fin. It's very important to clip the fin all the way to the base. This one right here. It's right on the top between the dorsal fin and the tail fin. Go from back to front. We need to clip it really good or else the fin can regenerate. Um, it'll grow back over time if we don't clip it really well. So don't be afraid of, of clipping the fin uh, really well. The fish, the fish do fine. We're going to do 43,000, we hope, today. What you want to do is keep a count in your head of how many you clip. A Creole clerk comes along, who's somebody that works on the river and, and works for the department, or you guys, and pull up next to a boat and say, okay, you mind if I see your catch? And he can pull up the catch, and he can look to see later on down the line if this fish has an adipose clip. They'll know exactly when it was clipped, it's a brown trout, they'll know how it's growing compared to other brown trout species that you might have. You know, you can tell when exactly the date it was stocked, where it was stocked, uh, how much it's grown, if it's right. moved. Uh, so there's a lot of good information. Recently, the state muskie, state record muskie was caught at Moorhead. A little girl caught it and she was tickled to death. But as you look at the picture of her and her stepfather holding this fish up, it was fin clipped. You could see that, you could see that I think it was on the right side it's, it's a pectoral fin was clipped. They can tell by which fin they clipped what year they did that, and they, that's what kind of information you can find out down the road. And so throughout the rest of the year, uh, and for years to come, we go back to the, uh, the tailwater below Cumberland Lake, and we'll monthly, on a monthly basis, we'll use electrofishing equipment. We'll sample these fish, we'll bring them to the surface, investigate them, and we'll be able to use those clips to identify which strain is there. Management decisions will be made in the future based on uh, a lot of different parameters that we may get from this strain, each strain of fish.
Tell you what, we're, rolling, we're moving a lot of fish out of here right now. And that's the, that's the name of the game, moving fish. We got 43,000 total for the day. So in a nutshell, next time you catch a trout, pay attention. If it's got a fin clipped, you may be able to call your fisheries biologist and find out when that fish was stocked, what type of fish it was, and find out all kinds of interesting information. Maybe one day it'll be a state record. We'll be able to track their growth and uh, for a number of years to come. Mm -hmm.